There was no need for this man to die. He had crash-landed successfully. He suffered no injuries, no broken bones. Even without equipment, he could have survived. All he needed was matches. A box of matches and knowledge. Knowledge of how to use what he had. I'm going to supply you with what knowledge I can. Though you can get by with very little else, you should always be supplied with certain equipment. An emergency kit or rucksack is vital. If none is available, you don't like what is given you, assemble one yourself. Don't let anyone rise you out of it. Take whatever else you like, but, but these things are essentials. A pair of gloves. A complete flying suit. Automatic pistol, 45 caliber, and two spare clips. Boots. Socks, and extra socks. Rations. Matches. And a watertight, floatable matchbox. A good grade pocket knife, preferably a scout knife. A small axe. And of course, your parachute. That's essential. Take these things and you can sustain yourself if you're forced down. Now let's get to the briefing. Though you've never flown it, it's a routine flight. You ought to fly pea shooters from here to Ladd Field. Captain McIntyre will be flight leader and pilot a B-17. It'll act as navigation ship and be your radio contact. It will check you every 20 minutes. Be sure you keep tuned. You'll be flying over wild, desolate country. Heavily wooded areas dotted with frozen rivers and lakes. Mountains, snow, and ice. ago, I was selling myself at Miami Beach. Now look at me, flying over snow country. Joe, I mean snow. Hide the McIntyre. Hide the McIntyre. Hi to McIntyre. Hi to McIntyre. Come in, please. Please come in, Mac. Hi to the briefing officer. Come in, please. Brother, please come in and talk like you never talked before. no need for this man to die. Don't pay 
bail out. Don't bail out. Do not bail out. Do not bail out unless there's uncontrollable fire or structural failure. Always stay with the airplane. It affords protection on the ground and greatly increases your chances of being seen by searchers. Select your landing spot intelligently. A smooth, snow-covered swamp, river bar, lake, near road or railroad if possible, so rescue and salvage are easy. Slopes or ridges are generally warmer than valleys, and the difference in temperature may mean the difference between life and death. The difference between life and death. Altitude not less than 5,000 is desirable. Make full use of radio while still in air. Transmit blind. Conditions, position, topography, landmarks. Make a slow landing. Prop should be feathered or stopped by gently stalling airplane. Such a landing capably executed is only slightly rougher than normal. Don't get out of plane unless absolutely necessary. I think it might be necessary. Piece, I think. Slightly rougher than normal. Where did that briefing officer get that? Of course. Sam. Always make a belly landing. With your gear retracted, danger of turning over is very slight. Now he tells me. Standing around here, let it be finding some place I can dig in and try to get word back. areas is a tremendous job. You'll not be able to make more than a mile an hour. Walking is a last resort. Stay with your plane, except when positive of your position. Positive that shelter is within easy reach. Never attempt to travel without adequate equipment. In ordinary flying gear, you cannot last more than two days. McIntyre to Hardy. Come in, Hardy. Formation, continue on to Lad Field. I'll search back along flight line for Hardy. Thank you. 
time. Sure sucks in fast around here. I'll never find the new stuff. The Air Corps doesn't let men stay lost. Your outfit, your pals know you're missing, and they'll search until you're found. Your main business is to help them right where you are. Where am I? A certain well-known crick. Avoid panic. Conserve your energy. Be calm. Take stock of the situation. See what can be used. A hearty, complete captain outfit. One pocket knife, one match pack, one jerk. Your chute will provide you with ample material for many uses. Don't hesitate to use it, or any parts of the airplane. Equipment is much easier to replace than pilots. There's plenty to occupy your attention. Drain oil for future use before it congeals. Build a fire as soon as possible and make camp. Collect firewood, a lot of it, and keep collecting. Okay, okay, one thing at a time. But uh, keep reminding me. It's hard to tell dead from dormant wood in extreme cold. But look for dead wood. It burns more easily. For tinder, use birch bark, spruce bough tips, rotten dry wood, pussy willow fuzz. All the bushes will burn even though green. Twist and break them. Now's the time to follow in your own footsteps, Lieutenant. It's going to be a long fight. Round two coming up. Wood sure got all the weight you missed, Bob. Don't expend energy aimlessly. Plan your actions. Get the most done for every effort. Great old second, that briefing officer. Plan action. Use the sled to haul wood. I don't know how to do it. Above all things, 
Avoid wet feet. Wet socks and snow in your flying boots quickly destroy their insulating ability. Tie your trousers on the outside to prevent snow from packing in. You better try remembering these things before they happen. No wonder my dogs are cold and wet. Remove wet shoes and socks at once. You walk around in my bare feet, I suppose. Your parachute will provide you with ample material for many uses. The importance of keeping the feet dry or of tending them at once if wet cannot be overemphasized. Don't hesitate to use any equipment. If you haven't got extra socks, make foot wrappings from your parachute. A wet foot may freeze in 20 minutes and produce irreparable damage. You spread it on the wing. We cut it better. Lieutenant, sometimes your cleverness amazes me. Cut material into strips about 10 inches wide, 6 feet long. Slit one end to insert the foot. Put the strips next to your body to warm the silk. Dry the feet thoroughly. Make sure there's no snow on the material. Wrap the strips, not tightly, around your foot and ankle. Leave an overlap and fold it back loosely over the toes. Continue wrapping so that there are at least three layers of cloth over each part of the foot. The next strip is started the same way but is wound around the leg as a leg. Alternate this way, wrapping each leg until an inch thickness or more has been laid, depending on the width, and secure the leggings with parachute cord. How the hell will I get my boots on? Don't wear your boots over these wrappings. They're too tight. And when wet, they're not easily dry. Cut canvas from an engine cover or the chute pack itself.
fashion it into an overshoe. You'll find you have a kind of muckluck, Eskimo footgear, that will keep your feet warm and dry. Remember, your feet must be protected at all costs. And it's not as easy to tell when your feet approach the freezing point as other parts of the body. Hands, nose, cheeks, chin, and forehead are also easily subject to frostbite. You won't feel it, or it doesn't hurt. But gray and white patches appear on the skin. Watch your face for this evidence of it. Watch my face? It won't work, friend. I forgot to bring my other head. Wrinkle your face from time to time to discover any stiffness. The flight surgeon who passed me could only see me now. Let's take a look at this in the mirror. Mirror, mirror in my hand. Who's the fairest in the land? <laughs> Not me, bub. My schnoz looks like a vanilla popsicle. Never rub frostbite. Keep the part out of the wind and warm it gradually. Thaw just by placing a hand over the frozen areas until circulation is restored. Warm your hands inside your clothes, under the armpits or between the legs. Now where were we? Oh, yeah. Getting the most done with the least effort. Soak pieces of canvas in the oil for future use in lighting fires or making smoke signals. Mush. Mush on back for that wood. Boy, I never thought I'd wind up as a one-man dog team. larger pieces for a long-lasting fire. In extreme cold, wood is very brittle. Good-sized birch or spruce branches can be broken, or even a small tree felled easily. And me with it. hotter standing over a fire than it is getting it started. Always unbutton or remove clothing layer by layer before you start to perspire. You must keep clothes dry and free from perspiration. Damp clothes, especially wool, lose their insulating quality and cause freezing. Moisture conducts heat away from the body. 
Men literally go out from conduction. All right, but all I gotta say is this is a hell of a spot for a strip tease. In working or traveling at 40 below, men can strip down to their shirt sleeves and be safer than when fully clothed. Doo -doo -doo. Yes, and as warm. Yeah, I guess I'm old-fashioned, but it seems to me I ought to wear a lot of clothes when I'm up to my crotch in snow. Tight clothing is dangerous. It impairs the circulation. Always permit free passage of air. Leave the clothing loose around the body, tight at the neck, and snug at the wrist. That traps the warm air, and the cold air being heavier won't rise. Like me tomorrow morning. Freezing to death often results from becoming overheated. All right, all right. What good is all this remembering? What am I knocking myself silly for? They'll probably never find me. Probably haven't even any idea where I am. If a radio check were okay, then he should be down right about here. Frank, how's the weather? A little on the stinky side, Mac. We want to get up and look for Hardy first thing in the morning. There are heavy clouds and moderate icing in the pass, and low ceilings over most of the roof. Might lift some overnight, though. Well, order the best, because we're going to start searching tomorrow in anything better than zero, zero. Sometimes a man's strongest link to life. Garden. You could say that again. Brief the boy, you really call it. This tinder burns like a top sarge. thinking about a place to sleep. Pick a spot protected from the wind. A good sheltered place that will not be covered with drifting snow. Clear it. Then get a stout pole. Give him the axe, axe, axe. Where? Right in his neck, neck, neck. Yeah. I'm not bringing the axe, axe, axe. Wire. That's what I guess. Wire for bracing. Now, what's easiest to get at? We 
control cables in a flat. Perfect. Choosing the theme, my lieutenant. Better take the shoes to keep it dry. Lay the pole from the crotch of one tree to the other. You like this, Greasy? It's my own idea. Yeah. Now construct a framework of pull. Lean spruce or evergreen boughs against the sides, pointing the twigs downward. Patch the sides with brush. And then, chink it with snow, banking it well at the bottom keep the wind from blowing in under it. This storm keeps up. That's one job I won't have to do. You're not through yet. Pack down or brush out all snow on the inside. Make a mattress of pencil-thick spruce bough tips to insulate you from the ground. And with your fire in front of the opening, you'll have a comfortable wiki up. Conserve your matches. Don't smoke unless you get a light from the fire. This is pretty well set now. I have to be come to home. Don't neglect cooking. Prepare two meals daily if food is available. Today, especially, a nice hot plate of melted snow. As a matter of fact, improvise a utensil and melt snow if you have to. Drunk hot, it conserves and adds to body heat. We 
wish I had a recipe for boiled boots. Let's see how I rig this. Place metal to the side of the fire, not over it. It's a relief that had hot chocolate if I'd have brought along a chocolate bar. Never eat snow without first warming. It lowers body heat. That man in this snow. How does he want it? Room temperature? Wrap it in a cloth and at least warm it inside your pocket. I feel, old boy, that's not a very good idea for us absent-minded pilots. Warm only a small amount at a time. What I'd really like to know is what I'm going to use to warm myself tonight. Your parachute can be used as a sleeping bag. You're right in that old oven. Better have a dress rehearsal to see how this works. After all, it's not my regular nightshirt. Take care there's no snow on you or the chute. Then simply wind it around you. Leave enough material at the bottom to tuck around your feet, and at the top to form a hood. Maybe I shouldn't sleep. Get plenty of sleep. You can survive many days without food if you relax. Your body is a good furnace. Good enough to keep me from freezing in my sleep? Cold will awaken you before you freeze, unless you're exhausted. And exhaustion comes from forcing yourself to keep awake or keep moving when rest and sleep should be taken. In cold regions, that is absolutely essential. The soul. Holy mothers, what's that? Wolves? The howl of wolves usually denotes nearness of game. That's good. Maybe I eat tomorrow. Didn't I bring my 45 and that over and under? Give us a game. Maybe you? Generally, you have nothing to fear from wolves. Once they get the man sent, they won't attack unless you run. Just stand stock still. Mister, you stand stock still. If a pack of wolves come around to take census, they'll interview me from the top of the nearest tree. Stand still to escape wolves. Flash around to drive sharks away. Then you kind of want to be a flyer. That the briefing officer said about taking an emergency kit. I'm sure, no better next trip if there is a next trip. Assuming you went down at a point midway between the last two radio checks, your best possibility is in this area. Right. Previat, uh, you search the uh, valley flats from Northway to Tope River. Uh, hold your altitude down to 800 feet. Mark your flight line. And indicate any ground fog areas so that we can cover them later. Roger. Snazzy, you take the uh, area along the valley from Tope River.
Look pretty, baby. Your brothers seem to be doing their share, and you're made of the same stuff. Mixed green and dry wood. I'll even feed you this good solid oil. Chew it up, nice and smoky. Satisfied, Mr. Briefman Officer? They're your universally recognized distress signal. Three smoke columns by day, three fires by night. Sure hope somebody comes around to admire them. Don't despair. Even though weather conditions might delay rescue operations several days. Keep your fires going, even in overcast. You can almost be sure you'll be picked up if you make a determined effort to call yourself to the attention of searchers. Right now, I aim to catch me a rabbit. In snow country, rabbits can be snared with ridiculous ease. You can use safety wire. Look, man, I learned this one when I was a kid. In deep snow, rabbits must keep to their runs to avoid floundering. I didn't know that. These runs... Hard-beaten paths and willow and alder clusters are a good source of supply. You don't have to tell me. Just set a snare in the run. See? You do it this way. Leave clearance enough so that the rabbit is bound to head into the loop. I'll do more. I'll guide him through with his willow branch. Didn't know that one, did you? Visit it often to prevent the loss of any catch to other animals. Okay, later. First, I'm going to dust off my plane so it can be spotted. You can sometimes fish successfully by melting a hole in the ice of a stream or lake. Yeah, but I haven't got a stream or a lake handy. Besides, it'd be too tough to keep a hole open. You build a fire on the ice. Make a line out of shoot cord. And always boil fish if possible. All right, if possible. That takes care of that. To make your plane even more visible from the air, put bright colored or reflecting objects on the wing. There, that ought to be enough to attract them. Your radio may even be used after a crash land. Radio, I forgot about that. Battery frozen solid. I could have kept it warm by the fire. I'd have been able to get a spark from it. You could have gotten a spark from it, too, to start a fire. Well, the method failed. Well, I just have to take chances on the signals I have. You can tramp out the letters SOS in the snow and outline them with branches. Outline them with branches? That's a great idea. Glad I remembered that one. At night, if a plane's motors are heard, signal flares or landing flares or a very pistol can be used, if you have them. We're doing pretty good with what we do have, though. Continue to improve your camp. Don't just get by. Your degree of resourcefulness will determine the degree of your comfort. Make a windbreak for your shelter. Avoid snow blindness. Blacken your nose and cheeks with soot or charcoal. Or burn holes through half-inch pieces of wood or bark and fashion the eye shield around your head with cord. Never matter. Never mind. I'll pull down my goggles when I have to. Continue to bring in wood. Deep breathing irritates your throat and causes chest pain. So cover your mouth and nose when you're exerted. But try not to do it. Work easily, steadily, rather than in spurts. <laughs> Construct supports. Dry your clothes. 
socks, boots, sleeping bag. Take care that they cannot be burned or scorched. Strengthen and insulate your shelter well. Improvise snowshoes from willow branches and shoot cords. Now, let's see about using this. These well shoes lead me to dinner. I be in serve to a guy who's serving his country. The inner bark of willow is edible. Rabbits can eat the bark. I'll eat the rabbit. Chunks of meat should be removed two minutes after the water boils to preserve essential vitamins. Eat meat rare and drink the juices. Don't worry, there'll be nothing left of this rabbit and might even chew the bones. 